Keeping it real, real's how we keep it. Get ready for Eddie. Set back the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. Eddie, host of the Dean Show, we're keeping it real here. I just got done doing another episode of the Dean Show. So I'm excited, it's Ramadan coming, and we're going to be coming to you with some great, exciting episodes, so make sure you're tuning in. Now, I wanted to take off with something that was fresh in my mind. I just interviewed a brother by the name of Brent, recently accepted Islam, maybe four months ago. He was in the military, and American, and the guy was searching for the truth for 10 years. And he was exposed to Islam, to Muslims, tried very hard not to accept, meaning that he just didn't want to believe that Islam was the truth, because it's based on proof and evidence. And the more he was going into it, the more he'd be lying to himself if he didn't accept it. And that's what many people do. They don't have the courage. They see one plus one equals two. Where are you going to go with that? It's only one God. Worship the Creator, not the creation. Do what God wants you to do on His terms, not your desires. Islam is straightforward. And he saw past all of the false propaganda. And another unique thing about this individual, and we'll have this show up in Ramadan, so I need you guys to really tune in to benefit from these programs that, alhamdulillah, we're able to bring you. We also have Yasser Qadi coming on and other great shows, especially for Ramadan. Now what I really wanted you guys to reflect over that, A, it's Ramadan. So I really need to take advantage of Ramadan. What is it here for? The great wisdom behind it is Allah tells us in the Quran, God tells us in the Quran that fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed to those before you, that you may increase in taqwa, God consciousness. That's right, so He can carry you over for the whole year, training the soul to temper, to have it refrain from it riding you. You don't have the wild stallion ride you, you ride it. And many of us are having this nafs, the desires ride us. And it's interesting, something was brought to my attention. This is by a Muslim, and many of us, we just away from the deen. And a lot of times, it's the parents' fault. Let me give you just an example, true story. And while I'm talking, you're going to see some of these pictures so we can be more effective, we can really get the most out of this video through visual effect and through the audio and through the pictures. Now listen, the brother, I hadn't seen him in years. I remember I knew him back from Jahliya and I ran into him and it was just real exciting seeing him. And he's a Muslim. You know, Muslims obviously for the not yet Muslims tuning in is one who chooses consciously to submit to the Creator, not the creation. That's what it is. Jesus was Muslim, Moses, Abraham, all the prophets were Muslim. Now you live in the purpose of life. So I saw this brother, and after seeing him on the, maybe the fourth, fifth time, finally I had observed some things, and I went to his business, and he's got the music jamming all the time, and F-bombs coming out of the mouth. And finally I said, listen, brother, after we talked, and I expressed the love that I had for him, and I said, look, you know, if you don't mind, you give me all this advice. Let me share some advice for you, please. You could take it if you'd like, and I think it really benefits you. I said, look, you know, I, I can tell there's some things because he expressed being depressed. He expressed having this void in his heart. And I said, I'll tell you something that's really affecting amongst other things. But one of the things you can cut out immediately and see immediate gratification is all of this bling bling music, all of this stuff that's just getting your desires hot. This is audio pornography. It's really, gonna, it's really affecting you. Cut it out, brother. Even though you've been addicted to it for so long, Cut it out, replace it with the Qur'an, some good lectures, some good talks, things that will increase, that will charge the battery, charge the heart. And then also these F-bombs, I said, man, look, man, you're a Muslim. Cognizant that, look, Allah is your Lord, your Creator, the Creator who created you. Look, He don't like these profanities coming out of our mouths. The tongue that remembers the Creator, it should not utter these things. So at least when you're around me, try not to, to let all this foul language come out of your mouth. And then maybe you'll start to be more cognizant of that and then you'll probably replace it and not let it come out with anybody but he said you know what and going back to linking it back to the parents being to blame he said man I've been swearing my whole life my father they're Muslim cursing my brother's cursing everyone's cursing I said subhanallah you see parents what examples have you been to your kids so now the kid is just mimicking mom and dad dad smoking right Letting F-bombs out, what do the kids do? Doing the same, same thing. So it's time to make a change. 
So I said, let you be the one who makes a difference. Now you can make the change. And children are rising up now and helping their parents see the way that's pleasing to the Creator, Islam. So you study it, you learn it, you implement it, and you be the role model for your parents now. And parents now is Ramadan. Let us get with it, all of us, to really reflect and think. Death can come at any time. And then tomorrow, bye-bye is too late. And what do we leave behind if not a righteous child? Another thing that I, was, I wanted to share with you from this story that I did with Brent, who's coming up in Ramadan, his story was he lost his son. He lost his son. Two-month-old baby, boy. You know how hard that is? SubhanAllah. And he's going through many challenges and tests. And for those now who think, I'm just going to come into this deen, this way of life, and think it's, oh yeah, it's hallelujah, it's all good. No. Allah says in the Quran, look, the Creator is saying, Do you think that you'll just say, I believe and you won't be tested? This life is a test. But on one end, everyone's being tested. But some have the Creator with them and some don't. And Allah is saying with every difficulty, With every difficulty comes the relief, the ease. Twice He says it. So be expecting it. It's coming. So don't think now, okay, you just take the shahada, La ilaha illallah, there's nothing worthy of worship except the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Muhammad is His messenger, including, not excluding Jesus, Moses, and all the preceding messenger. We know how it goes. And now we think it just all smooth and dandy. No, it's going to be trials and tests. Allah is testing your sincerity. And I always refer people to the show I did with Dr. Lawrence Brown, who he lost when he accepted Islam. He lost his, he's a successful doctor, lost his house, his guest house, and his dog. His wife took it all. And he was sleeping in a pay-by-day motel. And he testifies that he held on. I was test, Allah was testing him. And at the end, what happened? He got twice full, three times full back. New family, new wealth, everything Allah. Because that's Allah's promise, the Creator's promise. What you leave, what you lose in the path of Allah, Allah will replace it. So hold steadfast to those who are Muslim, thinking about being Muslim. You will be challenged. But there are no group of people who are, on, who, who are not on the truth. Look at Jesus. He was spit on. He was ridiculed. They tried to kill him. All the messengers. But what happened? They were what, trying to win a popularity contest? Just blending in? No, they were speaking the truth. And what happened? At the end, they were victorious. They got Jannah, paradise, waiting for them. And that's what you'll have waiting for you. But we have to stay steadfast. And with the last thing I want to end is, I heard also was brought to my attention, there was a Muslim making a claim or saying, and, and many of us, again, out of ignorance, we don't know the deen, we don't know the purpose. So he said, I dare anyone to find me anything better than riding through LA with the dog on my lap and listening to Tupac doing like this, this, this stuff. I mean, really, when you do have La ilaha illallah, when you have this deen in your heart, you've connected the heart back to the maker of the heart, that is when you have this contentment, this peace. You know, you go to the gym and you, you chase this feeling that you get from, they call it a runner's high. But we, when we've experienced based on proof and evidence, not blind faith. No, Islam is based on clear evidences and proofs that it's indeed from the maker, the creator of mankind. Definitely, without a doubt. And now you experience this, this, this feeling and then you end up chasing it your whole life because it's not every day now. You're on a cloud, floating high. No, like everyone else. Sometimes you come to the prayer, it's luggage. Sometimes you're in it all the way, half percent. Some people have their prayer accepted 20, 30, 40 percent, as is stated in the hadith. Depending on your concentration, your sincerity, many people don't understand the Quran, the language. That's why it's a lifetime journey of learning understanding and chasing what you've experienced because many of us we come into this deen and then Allah lets us taste the sweetness of Iman and then it drifts off and then again we chasten it it comes and goes you know what I'm saying but what are you chasing on the other side this is something that brings reverence to the heart rejuvenates the heart subhanallah and at the end you have Jannah guaranteed for all the struggles that you go through because as the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, there is no affliction that befalls a believer except it's good for him. Not even 
the prick of, of a thorn that expiates your sins. And many, how many of us are not making mistakes each and every day, subhanAllah. So when good comes to you, you're, alhamdulillah, thank God. A calamity comes, you're patient. And there's goodness in that. And at the end, Jannah is waiting for you. Jannah! That's it. So let us take advantage of this blessed month of Ramadan. Islam based on the five pillars, testifying that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth. And Muhammad is the last and final messenger. Jesus fasted. We accept him as a messenger, not a God. He never claimed to be God, a son of God, that he died for people's sins. People go away from religion because of all this man-made hocus pocus mum, mum, mumble jumble that doesn't make sense. But we believe in a believable message based on a believable book. The Quran, testable, a living miracle, and all of the guidelines are there. So after we establish this, the Salat, five times a day, we have to be connecting with our minimum, connecting the heart back to its maker, giving to the poor, the zakat, hajj, once in your lifetime, and now you have the blessed month of Ramadan. It's here. Don't lose it. Take advantage of whatever you've done in the past. Give it up now. And inshallah, you can leave off all of those vices for this month. Train yourself. Control yourself. Discipline yourself and make what is good for you a way of life. This deen is good for your heart. It's good for you in this life and in the hereafter because we're going to die. And at the end, it's only two places, Jannah or Jahannam. That's it. So we love the best for everyone. Keeping it real here. Really reflect what's the purpose of life, why you've been created. And Muslims, you know, and the not yet Muslims really investigate Islam Keep watching the Dean Show and those who've been slacking off, get with it. Get with it because we know anyone who testifies and believes in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah will be in Jannah. But some will have to spend some time to go ahead and expiate for the wrongs, the evils, the sins that people have done in Jahannam. We don't want to spend a second there. So now is the time to be cognizant of what my purpose is. And Ramadan is this blessed month. Don't lose out on all the wonderful rewards. And make sure also that you're sharing. Share this. Share this with your friends and family. Tell people about the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Right now! Do it! Like us on the Facebook. Now we're on the Instagram. We're using all these social media tools. I'm telling you, if you're not using it for good, man, this stuff really affects the heart too. Use it for the good. There's all sorts of, all sorts of just, I don't want to get into it, things that are out there. But use it for the good that it can be used for. So go ahead and share this. Twitter, Facebook, like our shows, follow us. You know how the rest goes. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.